Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. And I'm James Vacker, and I'm filling in for the chair of the Health Committee, Corey Johnson, who could not be here today. So while I'm on the train, I was asked to do this, and it's my pleasure to fill in when a member is ill. Today, the committee will be hearing legislation relating to the creation of a water tank inspection report database. The city's water mains provide enough pressure to deliver water to buildings up to six stories. Taller buildings use electric pumps to carry water into water tanks on the top of the building and rely on gravity to distribute the water to the floors below. According to the Department of Mental Health, there are about, about 10,000 buildings in the city that contain at least one water tank. The majority of these tanks are made of wood, and when not maintained properly, they have been found to contain viruses, bacteria, and parasites. In 2009, the council passed Local Law 11, sponsored by Councilmember Dan Gorodnik, which required building owners to have their water tanks inspected annually and submit the results of these inspections to DOHMH upon request. In 2013, DOHMH inspections on a random selection of 110 buildings over seven stories found that only a third were able to demonstrate proof of a water tank inspection in the previous year. Having only one third of building owner owners following the law is unacceptable. Intro 657A, sponsored by Councilmember Garodnik, which we are hearing today, would require building owners to submit annual water tank inspection reports to DOHMH and would require DOHMH to forward the results of water tank inspections to the Department of Buildings. The bill requires DOB to create a water tank inspection database accessible through its website, which would contain each building's complete history of water tank violations. Intro 657A would require DOHMH to report, to submit a report relating to water tank inspections to the council on an annual basis and require that such reports include data on the number of inspection results received and the number of results that demonstrate compliance with the health-related requirements for water tanks. I want to thank my colleague, Councilmember Garodnik, for pursuing this issue. And uh, Councilman Gar Member Garodnik, I'd like to introduce you to say a several words on the bill you're sponsoring today. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chair Vaca, and uh, of course we wish, uh, wish uh, Chair Johnson a speedy recovery. Um, I'm very pleased we're having a hearing today on Intro 657, which is a bill that we introduced to strengthen and bring greater clarity to rules surrounding the inspection of water tanks. Water tanks are an essential element of New York City's water infrastructure, and it is critical for the public to understand their condition. Yet for many years, it was impossible for a member of the public to find out whether the water tank providing water to their family was meeting basic maintenance requirements. That's why uh, we passed that bill back in uh, 2011 uh, that actually required that there be the opportunity to access uh, water tank inspections as a resident of uh, a building. Uh, prior to that time, you couldn't access water tank inspections even uh, if you had a subpoena uh, so it was an oddity under New York's law, and we changed that. However, investigations by the Department of Health and by the New York Times found that few buildings were having their water tanks inspected. Fewer still were complying with the requirement that we created to have proof of that inspection. And even when water tanks were being inspected, those buildings were largely not posting the required notice to tenants that the inspection results were available. All requirements of the bill that we passed to this council. The system continued to be broken. In 2015, the Department of Health took a big step forward and adopted rules requiring building owners to share these inspection results with the department. Subsequently, DOHMH created a database follow, allowing residents to see water tank inspection results for buildings. Our bill today goes even further. It codifies into the administrative code this requirement for buildings to submit their annual water tank inspection results to the Department of Health. It also adds language requiring the Department of Health to send these results to the Department of Buildings, which could better allow agencies to work in tandem to identify and rectify maintenance issues with water tanks. And lastly, our bill would require the Department of Health to submit annual reports on water tank inspections to the Council so we can 
also better track compliance. Uh, we are going to bring some more sunlight to the issue here and give the public more certainty that their water is safe to drink. Uh, I look forward to hearing today's testimony, and I encourage my colleagues to join me in support of this bill, Intro 657A. And, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity, and I look forward to hearing the testimony. Thank you, Dan Garodnik, and um, I am already a co-sponsor. I think this is very much needed. Uh, we have been joined by Councilmember Yadanis Rodriguez and Rafael Espinal, who will be right back, I'm sure. And Councilmember Peter Ku is here, and Councilmember Corn Robert Cornegie. I want to thank the staff for all their hard work, as always. Uh, I'd like to introduce Corinne Schiff, who is Deputy Commissioner for the New York City Department of Health, and I will have to swear you in. Uh, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Yes. Thank you so much. Would you please proceed? Introduce yourself for the record. Good morning, members of the Health Committee, Council Member Gorodnik, and please send my best to Chairman Johnson. I'm Corinne Schiff, Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Health at the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. On behalf of Commissioner Bassett, thank you for the opportunity to testify on Introduction 657A, which builds on an existing framework to enhance transparency about drinking water tank inspections. Before turning to the proposed legislation, I want to provide... Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm to interrupt you. I'm sorry. But could we have copies of your testimony? I don't have a copy here at the... Uh, is it there? I want to follow you as you speak, but we always have testimony in front of us. Is that it? Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Sure. Uh, uh, before turning to the proposed legislation, I want to provide some background on the Health Department's role overseeing the safety and quality of New York City's drinking water. The city's water originates from protected reservoirs in the Hudson Valley and Catskill Mountains. About a billion gallons a day travel south through a system of approximately 7,000 miles of water mains, tunnels, and aqueducts to the city, where they are distributed throughout the five boroughs. Pressure in the city water mains is powerful enough to send water into buildings and up as high as the sixth floor. In taller buildings, water is typically delivered to the basement and then pumped to a tank on top of the building, where, by force of gravity, it descends through building pipes to the tap. The Health Department has oversight responsibility to ensure that the city's drinking water meets federal and state water quality standards. We do this by inspecting upstate reservoirs, water treatment plants, and storage and distribution facilities. We review designs from the Department of Environmental Protection for new and upgraded water facilities, validate system-wide sample results, and check water supply and treatment operational reports. The Health Department conducts water quality sampling at taps around the city and investigates water quality-related complaints. The Health Department also enforces New York City Health Code and Administrative Code requirements on property owners regarding building drinking water tanks. Water tanks, the iconic, round, mostly wooden structures that dot our rooftops, are subject to mandates from the Health Department and Department of Buildings that govern construction, annual cleaning, inspection and water sampling, tenant notification, and reporting on inspection and sampling results. New Yorkers can find the results of their building's annual water tank inspection and water sampling on our website at nyc.gov slash health slash water tanks. New York City water meets or exceeds legal requirements, is famous for its quality and great taste, and, as Dr. Bassett likes to say, is the best beverage for your health. The Health Department supports Intro 657A, which would restore the requirement that the Department report information about building owners' annual water tank inspections to the Council. By expanding transparency, the legislation will further promote New York's confidence in their drinking water. We look forward to working with the Council on this bill. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I would be happy to take questions. Thank you. Things don't come easy like this too often. Uh, so you're in favor of the bill, and you're, you're not suggesting any revisions or any reservations at all? Is, is that correct? Well, we look forward to working with you on some of the details, but we're, we're supportive. Okay. Uh, one or two things. I, I do want to mention we've been joined by Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer. Um, let me ask you something. So I have a building in my district. The, uh, the two tenant leaders asked that I go there and meet with them. 
I go there and I meet with them and there is a notice on the wall that the inspection for the tank is, has expired. I then go back to the agency, I go back to uh, Department of Health, and they say that it's up to date. It was inspected last on April 2016. The inspection has to occur within the calendar year, and results are required to be submitted by mail or online by January 15th of the next calendar year. So therefore, even though it expired, your agency is saying that the inspection can take place within the calendar year, which is giving this building in my district maybe a six-month extension on the, on the um, inspection, which I wasn't aware of. Is this uh, how things uh, proceed in matters like, uh, like this? Uh, the requirement in the health code is for an annual inspection and also for submission of the annual inspection report by January 15th of the following year. So there can be an inspection. They, they could do the inspection in April but not submit that report to us until the following January, and that's when our enforcement would begin. We, we do not know if the inspection was done yet. They have to make a report by January 15th. The tenants are not certain or not at all knowledgeable about whether or not an inspection was performed, even though in their lobby, is a notice that the inspection is past due. You're right that the requirement is to inspect the tank annually and also within the calendar year. So depending on the timing for the building, there could be an, uh, an, an additional couple of months. But I want to emphasize that the drinking water tank, um, by its very design, is extremely safe. It keeps the water very safe for a few reasons. Um, the first is that the water is coming directly from the city's water main. It enters the water tank at the top and is drawn out only through the middle. There's residual chlorine in the water and that acts as an ongoing disinfectant. And the water is constantly being drawn and pumped in anew and so there's constant circulation. The water is not stagnating. And then finally, the wood serves as a natural insulator, and so that water stays cool and provides a very low-risk environment. And so there is a, a, a requirement for an annual inspection and reporting that to us the following January, so we're sure to cover that 12-month period. But even if there is a little bit of extra time, there's really no in additional risk introduced into the system. New Yorkers are welcome to call 311 and make a complaint about that, but that's the way that the system works, and, and, we, and we think that that's really an appropriate response. Okay. I want to ask the sponsor of the bill, Councilmember Gorodnik, to start off with the questioning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and one thing that uh, I know you and I have learned over 12 years of service in the Council is that when the administration comes and says that they support the bill, you probably should just stop right there. But because I haven't learned everything in 12 years, I just have a couple of very small questions, uh, especially one in light of uh, the answer to the question you got a moment ago um, about the details of the bill. Is, is there any specific detail of the bill that, as you uh, sit here today, uh, believe that we should be uh, considering uh, changing, editing, modifying in any way? Well, we'd, we'd like to get back to you with, with, with the details. I'm not here. I don't have any line edits with me. Um, but you know, overall, we're supportive of it. As I said, we, we appreciate any opportunity to expand transparency about New Yorkers drinking water because we want New Yorkers to choose water. Um, so we'd like to be in touch with some, with some of the details, but I think we're, we're, we're very close. Okay. Uh, and when the Department of Health adopted rules requiring reporting actually to the agency, did you see any changes in the compliance uh, rates you know, the, the shift that was made uh, by the Board of Health toward universal reporting uh, in 2015, I think, has been extremely important and has allowed our, our enforcement to be much more robust. It's hard to answer that question because, as you noted in your opening comments, the system uh, that existed before universal reporting um, was, frankly, weak. Um, so it's hard to really say what the overall compliance rate was with testing, with maintaining reports, and with providing those to us. So I think we are moving towards a much more robust um, oversight of water tanks, and we're seeing really better and better compliance. And we continue, you know, I should say, we continue to see, uh, as we have, and I think 
we probably expressed this uh, years earlier, you know, we also have very active surveillance, and we don't have any evidence of a link, uh, a disease link between our water tanks um, and, and disease. So I think all of these changes have just have been uh, improvements, and I think the bill introduces some additional improvements. And, and just so that we have it for our own purposes, why do you think it is important for us to have some level of public disclosure of the water tank inspections? Why is it important for public health? Our position at the health department is that we want New Yorkers to choose water as their beverage. And the more that New Yorkers have confidence in really our world-renowned drinking water, uh, the more we think that they will choose water. We are, we are in favor generally of transparency. We do the people's work, and we want them to know what we do. But here especially, the more we can let people know that their water is safe and of excellent quality, uh, the more we think people will drink water, and that's good for their health. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to the department. Thank you. Uh, I had one quick question, and then Council Member Koo has questions. Uh, where do we stand with public buildings and public schools? Uh, do you inspect them yearly? Is the um, same effort being made to make sure that those water tanks there are uh, performing well and safe? So the, wa the water tank requirements apply to any building that has a water tank, so the enforcement system would be the same. Are you getting cooperation from NYCHA and HHC and other non-mayoral agencies? Is there cooperation? Is there work that your agency has done with those agencies? Uh, we certainly work closely with our sister agencies. I'm not aware of any uh, issues with their their water tank inspections, but I would I would I don't have any details about that, so I would have to look and get back to you. Um, but we certainly work very closely with with our sister agencies on all uh, water related issues. I, I do want to say that because I can ascertain that the um, differences or uh, modifications you're requesting are very minimal, if any, in this bill that uh, I'm going to recommend to the chair that we try to move this for a vote in the next several weeks. So um, we will fast track it based on your testimony today. So if there is input, it would be important that you get that in as soon as possible to the sponsor. Sure, we'd be happy to, to have those conversations uh, quickly and, and move ahead. Thank you. Council Member Koo. Thank you, Chair Walker, and thank you, Deputy Commissioner. Uh, my question is, is um, does this uh, inspection apply to all uh, buildings, including NYCHA, uh, federal, and state buildings? So the health code requirement uh, applies to all buildings with a water tank. Um, the city does not have jurisdiction over federal buildings, but, but um, buildings in the city that, that are under the authority of the health department, it applies whether it's a public or a private building. Um, the reason I ask you, because uh, recently we have two cases of legionary disease in one of uh, the NYCHA buildings in my district, you know, and they came and they inspect and they do all these other things to prevent uh, further happenings. So, uh, Having an inspection like this, annual inspection, will you prevent uh, the generic disease um, uh, break out in, in New York City? So Legionnaire's disease is actually entirely unrelated to drinking water tanks. Uh, in a situation where there are uh, two or more cases in a building, it sounds like there is a, a situation in your district um, where there were t at least two cases within the year of Legionnaire's disease in a building, that's, um, that is unrelated to the building water tank. We have an extremely active uh, Legionnaire surveillance program very, and with very sensitive systems to track Legionnaire's disease and to find patterns. And when we see a pattern in a particular building, then we launch an investigation of that building's water system it's not going to be an investigation of the water tank for all of those reasons that I articulated that for why a water tank is very safe, comes from the water main, the water's not stagnating, all for all of those reasons, that's not a contributor to Legionella bacteria, which is the bacteria that causes Legionnaire's disease. Instead, that investigation is going to be of the building's internal plumbing system. The plumbing system can be a place where Legionella bacteria grow. And so when we see a pattern of Legionnaire's disease cases 
in a building, then we work very closely, in this case it was NYCHA, we work very closely with the property owner, including NYCHA, to investigate the internal plumbing. It, sometimes it turns out that that's not why it is. There's Legionnaire's disease around. There are, there are you know, two to 400 cases a year. But it could be the building's water system, the internal plumbing, not the water tank. And so we conduct an investigation. If the results of that investigation indicate that there is the Legionella bacteria of the type that can cause Legionnaire's disease, then there are a variety of remedial efforts that can be undertaken, and we monitor that. We work very closely on the remedial effort at the building as well. So that is different from water tanks. So how many cases of uh, the, uh, water poisoning, no, the water disease uh, we have uh, in New York City, the major ones like, that cause people sickness, have they been, uh, that have been reported to the Department of Health, the how many cases annually because of the water tank problem? So we also have uh, an active surveillance program to track, for example, E. coli, which would be one of the bacteria that we'd be concerned about uh, for, that make people sick. And we have no evidence, no cases of, of E. coli that we can link to a drinking water tank. So those reasons that I, that I listed for why water tanks are very safe, those are the reasons why we have no evidence of disease linking to a water tank. So it's completely safe to drink from the faucet? in every building. What I'm here to say is that the water, that the water tank creates a system that is, that is very safe, which is why we're supporting the bill. We want New Yorkers to understand that their drinking water is safe and that it's the best beverage for their health. As Dr. Bassett likes to say, we want New Yorkers to drink water. That's not to say that there can't be some issue in a particular building. You know, New Yorkers who are concerned about their water can, for example, order a test kit from DEP, but New York has really the safest, some of the safest, highest quality water in the world, and we want New Yorkers to know that, and we want New Yorkers to drink water. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Koo. We've been joined by Councilmember Rosie Mendez. There being no further questions from the Council, I want to thank you very much for your testimony. I'd like to introduce our first panel, Darren Klein, the Alliance to Prevent Legionnaires, Stuart O'Brien, Plumbing Foundation, Arthur Clark, Plumbers Union, Local One. Mr. Clark, would you please uh, start in, introduce yourself? There we go, that's better. Thank you very much, Acting Chairman Vaca and members of the Committee on Health. My name is Arthur Clark. I'm the Training Director for Plumbers Local Union No. 1 Trade Education Fund. This jointly administered labor and management fund operates a 40,000 square foot training center located in Queens. In that facility, we provide training for a population of almost 6,000 plumbers from apprentices through journey workers and on up to foremen and supervisors. Students in our various training programs study the causes and effects of contamination in the water supply system and learn the skills necessary to install and maintain the equipment which provides clean water and more importantly, prevents our building's water distribution system from becoming a vector that spreads disease. Recent guidelines and warnings from the Center for Disease Control indicate that there is a growing awareness that most cases of Legionnaire's disease are traceable to the domestic water supply system inside buildings rather than to air conditioning cooling towers as was once suspected. I'm here today because I want to raise awareness of the fact that the public health risks associated with the domestic water supply system in our buildings are becoming more apparent than we ever knew, while our Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and I will apologize, I see there cooperating with the bill, so maybe I'm a little aggressive in this statement, is still not doing enough to monitor or enforce safety rules regarding equipment used for the purposes of storing and distributing drinking water in our buildings. These rules are on the books to prevent opportunities for contamination which have long been known to exist, and we now have even more to think about. 
Our drinking water is delivered to the city every day through a system of tunnels and aqueducts and distributed throughout the five boroughs through hundreds of miles of piping. There's a minimum water pressure throughout the city water mains, which is usually enough to deliver uninterrupted service up to the sixth floor of most buildings. Where buildings are taller, the water pressure in the system is insufficient to provide the minimum pressure and flow required in the building, and supplemental pressure must be provided by the building owner. Generally, this is achieved through the installation of an elevated water tank, either on the rooftop or within the building. Many buildings have tanks within the building somewhere. Where pumps are used to elevate the water pressure, there is often a large tank in the basement as well to prevent the low pressure in the water main while the pumps are running. All these tanks can be constructed either from wood or metal, and recently plastic tanks were proposed. It has been estimated that there are 10,000 to 12,000 of these tanks for storing and distributing drinking water in New York City, but the fact is nobody knows for sure how many of these tanks there are. Under the New York City Health Code, building owners are required to inspect water tanks annually and to maintain records of the inspections. This sounds like we have the right idea, but there's been a problem. For decades, they didn't have to submit their records to anyone. Did they do the inspections? How would anyone know? What if something happened? When water quality complaints are called into 311, they are initially routed to the DEP for handling. If upon investigation, DEP determines the complaint is related to the building's internal plumbing, it is then rerouted to the health department. As little as two years ago, if the health department was called in for unsanitary or unsafe water quality conditions in a building water tank, they would then ask to see the records of inspections. Was this how we should protect public health, wait until people are drinking unsanitary or unsafe water, and then ask if the tank has ever been inspected? Obviously not. Recently, the Health Department issued a rule that uh, starting in 2015, owners would have to file their water tank reports with the Health Department. Theoretically, this would solve the problem. With some simple record keeping, we would know how many tanks there are, we would know where they are, we would know if they were inspected, we could educate the building owners who didn't inspect their tanks, and the city could issue violations when no report was forthcoming. Problem solved. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened that way. After two years of mandatory filing, there is still no information available to answer any of these questions. How many tanks are there? Where are they? Were they inspected? How many reports have been filed? Has the city educated the building owners who are not inspecting? Has the city issued warnings or violations when no reports were forthcoming? We don't know any of this. Intro 657A represents a better attempt to fix this problem. Intro 657A, if enacted into law, will help keep New York a healthy city. Thank you. Sir, would you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Stuart O'Brien. I'm executive, executive director of the uh, Plumbing Foundation. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, summarize my uh, comments because they're duplicate of Mr. Clocks, but I want to drive home uh, some spe specific points. Uh, I first testified on this issue in 1998 before the Housing and Buildings Committee. I made two points back then uh, that really appear not to have changed too much. One is we really needed to know, to protect New Yorkers, the actual number of water tanks in the city. You heard today there's an estimated number, but we still don't know an actual number. I'll come back to that in a second. And the second thing was, in, back in 1998, there was no requirement. It was an honor system. The landlords would just keep their inspection report on their premises, and if the EOH came out and asked for a copy, uh, you would find out, oh, you didn't do it. There was no requirement, as there is for facades and boilers and all the other periodic inspections, that they be filed with the city. Those are the two points we made, the foundation made, in 1998. So, uh, let me start with, to, uh, to its very belated credit, DOH, in 2015, 17 years later, after we brought the issue up of you can't rely on an honor system, uh, that DOH issued a rule, which is codified uh, in the 657A, that those reports must be filed with the city. So how is the new rule working? That's what we care about, compliance, right? That's what we care about. So how's the new rule working? It became effective in 2015. We don't know. We still don't know how many tanks there are, how many reports are filed each year, and how often the city issues a violation when no report is filed. We still don't know that. Intro 657A would fix that. But I would point out that the Department of Health just testified. You would think if they were going to testify about this issue, on a rule that became effective in 2015, the simplest thing to do is say, okay, 
How many water tanks are there in the city? It's been decades since the law went into effect. We should know the number at this point after decades of existence of the, of the law requiring it. And how many reports were filed in 2016? The, law, the rule became effective in 2015. Why don't we know in two, today? Why weren't you told there are 10,722 water tanks and 4,000 reports were filed in 2016? Seems to me that's the question that should be asked before uh, the, the council today. But I, I do say 657A is a great step forward because it reinstates the requirement that the Department of Health asked that to, to expire in 2013, that they report to the city council on the number of tanks and the number of uh, reports of file. It's a great step forward, absolutely, there's no doubt about that. I'm a little concerned saying, well, we have some issues, we'd like to talk to you about it. I I've been, was in city government for many years. The agencies talk to you about the issues this is, this is an A bill. They should have been talking to you about any issues they have before. All I'm saying, there's been a reluctance for full transparency, and I heard that again today without a simple report. But I would just make one amendment. We're fully in support of this bill. We've worked with uh, Council Member uh, Gorodnik on it. It's a, it's a, a great bill. The only thing that we uh, suggest is, rather than an estimated number of water tanks, uh, that, uh, that the department must come up with an actual number. As I said before, it's been decades that this law has been in effect. Do you have an actual number at the Department of Buildings of the actual number of elevators, the actual number of boilers, the actual number of facades that require periodic inspections? The Department of Health, after decades, should be able to tell the city council how many water tanks there are in the city. Obviously, they change you know, when a new building goes up or a building comes down, but not an estimated number, a real number, and then for each year, how many reports were filed. If there are 10,000 water tanks, 4,000 reports were filed, you know the compliance rate is 40%. That is the only suggested change we have in this bill. Otherwise, we're fully supported. Thank you. And all the more reason why we in the council have legislation that we want enacted, and we do oversight over city agencies to accomplish so much of what you've indicated. Thank you. Sir, would you introduce yourself first? Yes. Um, my name is Darren Klein and I'm with the Alliance Prevent Legionnaires Disease. Good morning, Chairman Vodka and members of the Health Committee. Um, I'm the Director of uh, Technology and Science for the Alliance and I appreciate this opportunity to provide testimony in the proposed introduction of Bill Number 657A. The Alliance to Prevent Legionnaires Disease is a nonprofit public health advocacy group dedicated to reducing the occurrence of Legionnaires disease. We promote public research, education, best practices for water management, and advocating for comprehensive public water supply strategies to combat this preventable disease. I understand this legislation aims to provide greater transparency and availability of water tank inspection results. The Alliance supports this effort. However, we have two recommendations to take water quality in New York City to a higher level and to reduce Legionnaires disease cases, which at this time are higher than the outbreak year of 2015. First, we recommend the city to take a system-wide approach to addressing the water quality that supplies these tanks. Second, the Alliance would like the water tank inspections to include tests for Legionella bacteria in addition to the coliform and E. coli tests. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of strategies that address the reality that Legionella and other pathogens can exist in our public water supply. Some recent examples of Legionella in the New York City water supply are the 23rd Precinct in East Harlem, a Legionnaires cluster attributed to their shower facilities, and the Parker Towers in Forest Hills, where residents were told by the Department of Health not to run uh, hot water in their sinks or in their showers. To be clear, we do support proper building water management, which includes appropriate testing and treatment of water tanks. However, attempting to control water quality at the end of a very complex distribution system is not only expensive and time consuming, it hasn't proven effective as indicated by the cases of Legionnaires disease to date in New York City. It is simply not practical to expect building owners to effectively control waterborne threats, 
especially when the quality of the water supply varies due to unanticipated events. According to the CDC, about 35% of all Legionnaires' outbreaks can be attributed to events which take place outside of the building, including disruptions due to construction or water main breaks and even excessive rain. New York City continues to experience a record number of Legionnaires' disease. This year, New York City has experienced the largest number of Legionnaires' cases in history, even higher than 2015, which included a devastating outbreak. Compared to this time last year, cases are up 85%. But Legionella is not the only concern in New York City. To date, New York City has the highest number of cases of Giardia, Crypto, and E. coli since 2014. The Alliance urges city council members and other city officials to look beyond narrow approaches that focus only on one component and examine the system as a whole. We support a more comprehensive approach to the prevention of Legionnaires' disease that in addition to proper management of building equipment, equally focuses on steps that can be taken both short and long term to reduce Legionella health risks originating in the public water supply system. Some steps include increased investments in our aging water infrastructure to ensure that corroding pipes do not contribute, um, contaminate our water, better guidelines for communication between water utilities and building managers when water disruption events occur. Building owners should know when there is an increased risk for Legionella bacteria. Monitoring for Legionella in the public water supply to help determine the root cause of cases that take place throughout the city, including water tank inspections that detect Legionella bacteria and other opportunistic pathogens in the bulk water and with the use of the swabs in the tank. Minimum disinfectant residuals to ensure that the water flowing through public pipes is being treated properly before it enters our buildings. Broad solutions like these will ultimately make building water management more effective and provide water to our homes that we can consume confidently. We appreciate each of the council members' time and listening to this testimony and urge each of you to consider comprehensive solutions to keep our communities safe and ensure that they are receiving the safest and highest water quality possible. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Councilmember Gorodnik? Thank you. Just a quick comment. Uh, first of all, thank you all for your testimony. And um, uh, to the point uh, about the actual number, I think that is a, that is a fair point and one that we will we'll take back. Obviously, the Department of Health was generally supportive. We don't know if they had any particular uh, concerns. But you have raised one, perhaps the substantive issue of the, of the day as to the bill, as to actual number versus estimated number. So we will certainly take a look at that and uh, consider whether it's appropriate, feasible, et cetera, to add that into this bill. So thank you for that, and thanks to all of you for your testimony today. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for coming. And there being no further testimony or no further questions from the council members present, it is now 11 a.m., and this hearing of the Health Committee is hereby adjourned.